Welcome back to Planet Doug Behind the Scenes for Thursday, October 13th, 2022. It's 10 to 7 in the morning and I'm sitting inside the stairwell of uh, the hostel where I'm staying. Um, yeah, right in uh, Chinatown across the road from Pasar Seni. It's where I've stayed pretty much on all of my uh, return visits to Kuala Lumpur. And this is the place where I stored my bicycle and camera equipment and camping equipment and extra electronics gear. It was all here in this hostel. And for this uh, behind the scenes uh, journal episode, I thought I would take it on the road rather than inside my room because I'm meeting Daryl from Wander Eats for breakfast at 7.30. So I've got 40 minutes to walk there to meet up with Daryl and we're heading to a very special restaurant, uh, Cafe Dion, I think it's called. I don't know much about it, I haven't had time to read up on the history of this place, but I've walked by it literally dozens of times on my uh, previous visits to uh, Kuala Lumpur, but I've never actually gone inside for a meal. So when Daryl suggested a meeting here, I, I jumped at the chance. So I'm just gonna talk a little bit about yesterday, the events of unpacking, getting all of my stuff out of storage. Uh, that, was, that was quite an adventure and I'll talk about that as I walk through the uh, somewhat dark and gloomy streets of uh, Kuala Lumpur at uh, seven o'clock in the morning. And this uh, artwork in the stairwell kind of dates from when this hostel had a different owner and he developed this place as a kind of artist's collective. And it was known as a good place for, you know, traveling folks who have a bit of an artistic bent, who like to paint, who like to write, um, sing, um, all that kind of uh, stuff. So. Now, it serves, it's not even a hotel or a hostel right now. Um, it's only open for long-term visitors, so I could stay here because I took a room for one month. So the other people here are all, you know, long-term um, students or immigrant workers or a couple of travelers like me who basically stay places for a long time when they get there. You always have to, uh, oh, I, I never know which switch it is. I think it's this one. Yeah. You have to hit a button to release the magnet to go outside. Yeah, so here's the setting. I'm used to this neighborhood. I'm quite familiar with it. Wow. Even this shop has graffiti on the front. Very colorful anyway. But it has changed a great deal. All the stores that used to be along here, they're all changed. They're either gone, like closed permanently, or they changed into a different type of store. Even the 7-Eleven, which was right there, just, just up the street, is gone. Who ever heard of a 7-Eleven closing? But I guess the uh, pandemic has had a far-reaching effect. And I'm right across the road from the large uh, Travel Lodge Hotel right there. Central Market is right there, that blue light, pale blue building you see, that's the Central Market. Kasturi Walk, very familiar with that, that big archway that you see, that's a market walk, a lot of snacks there during the day. And if you look in this direction, which is the direction I'm going to go, that is a Pasar Seni MRT station. Two major lines uh, intersect there, so it's a very convenient place to be uh, located. Oh, I haven't checked this yet. I normally get my water from one of these uh, filter machines. And yeah, this one has been here forever. This is the one I used to use. I'm glad to see that it's still operational. Aqua Valley. So I'll get my drinking water here. Though there's definitely a debate. I was in a debate the other day with people about whether those machines make any difference because I was thinking about that when I was in Penang. My guest house had a little water filter attached to the, to the kitchen sink. And my question was like, is that safe to drink? Like would local people drink that or not? And they were saying, well, if you're willing to drink water out of one of these street side machines, that, that unit in your, um, kitchen is just as good, probably better than what you're getting from the street. So um, that was the conclusion there. 
And this is my regular lunch place. Come here any day of the week around lunchtime, you might find me sitting in there. Vinny Jaya, banana leaf curry house. Good morning. Yeah, even uh, this early in the morning, yeah, they're doing business. I like places that open early. But yeah, I used to I'd eat there all the time. But even they have changed a tremendous amount. They've all gone, it's very modern now. They used to come to your table, look at what you selected from the buffet, uh, take your drinks order, and then they write your bill on a little piece of paper. They tear it off a notepad, and then they hand it to you, and then and you bring that to the cashier. Now they've gone uh, digital, it's all done by tablet. And the, the, your bill is communicated via Bluetooth or wirelessly or whatever they do to the cash register at the front. So a guy just keeps coming up to your table with a tablet and he stands there. I don't know, it's almost like an inspector, you know, like a professor or teacher grading your school project. He looks down at what you're eating and what you've ordered to drink and he whips out his tablet and tap, 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 you know, enters all the numbers. And when you get to the cash register, you give them your table number or a little number they give you on a slip of plastic. And then uh, they look at that number call up your account and they can see your bill already prepared through the tablet. Busy place right here. As I said, past Arseni, all the buses stop here. Two major uh, MRT lines. The river is right over there. Uh, yeah, why don't we uh, walk that way just to take a look at the river and then I'll turn around and head towards the cafe. And right over there, I don't know whether it's occupied net yet, but they've been building that for so long. Pretty amazing. I, I never get tired of looking at that building. I saw it when there was no glass on it. There was just the, uh, the, the metal skeleton. And then it took them so long to actually, you know, put all the glass in place. Yeah, I'm always amazed at these giant buildings. Yeah, another uh, corner restaurant here. Your basic restaurant, Old Kasturi, Kapitiam. Yeah, when I see a place like that, it makes me feel like I'm back in Penang. It makes me feel uh, like I'm there. Now, let's see if we can get across safely. So one more view of a uh, sort of my my neighborhood. This is an interesting place here. I've always wanted to get a room here, the Ruma Tump Angan Starlight. I just think of it as the starlight, but I, I don't even know if they take walk-in guests or whether it's really long-term only. You know, people, maybe they're just apartments now. It's not really a hotel. It just looks like a hotel when you look inside the front door. And this is kind of new. When I first started coming to Kuala Lumpur, that Lavana Hotel, uh, I don't think it existed, but it's there now. Uh, you can get all these uh, free bus services come here, the Go KL, free bus service. I used to know a lot about these buses, all the different lines, the different colors, where they went. I'm gonna have to refresh my memory about how to use them. And they look different from the regular, you know, rapid KL buses. There's one over there, red and blue decor, uh, color scheme. Another, uh, yeah, this is a standard bus, like a rapid KL bus. That's what they look like. And I'm very curious about, this is my first view of the river since I've been back. And there's uh, the central mosque, uh, Masjid Jamek, is right over there. This is the uh, post office building. Yeah, this river, if you call it a river, and, and it is a river, but they've turned it into kind of a canal now, right? 
but it changes dramatically. In heavy rains, it rises very, very high, very quickly. But as you can see, even when it's low, it's carrying a lot of water, moving quickly. And I've walked up and down this river quite a bit. And you do get some homeless encampments underneath these areas here, sleeping at the side of the river, but they have to be careful, of course. Uh, monitor the weather, because the river rises, they get flooded out and they have to go somewhere else, make sure, they're, make sure they stay ahead of the floods. Check the time, I don't want to be late. Ah, it's still seven o'clock, so I have a uh, half an hour to go meet Daryl. There are a few things in life I despise more than me being late for anything, so I try very hard not to be late. I plan ahead. And the only way shooting this type of video makes sense for me from a time point of view is if I just do them quickly and make them very simple videos. I just turn on the camera, start talking, leave the camera running, and uh, when I stop talking, I turn it off. Okay, and that's the video. So very little editing. I'm not going to be adding little snippets of information or music or trying to, trying to be a YouTuber, you know? This is just me talking. Because the thing is, every morning, as I've mentioned, I write in a journal anyway, like an hour, hour and a half at a minimum. And I thought, well, I can take that hour and a half and use it to shoot a video just as well. So that is uh, what this experiment is all about. Yeah. So yesterday, yeah, things worked out pretty well. I had to get in touch with the manager of my guest house. He, he, there's no staff where I'm staying. There's no desk. There's no, no one there because we just look after ourselves. It sort of functions more like an apartment building now than a hostel. But the manager is in a little shop down on the street below. So I went to find him. Very nice guy, very friendly man. I was happy to see he was there when I popped in and he knew we'd, we'd made arrangements beforehand. I said I'd come find him in the afternoon and he could open the storage room and I could get all of my gear out of there. So, yeah, I don't know about all these um, traffic lights. Uh, <laughs> let's see. I've got a... Uh... Oh, I think if I want to cross in this direction, I have to push this one. Let's see what happens. But if there's no traffic, I'll just dash across. Yeah, I think I'll just, uh, just do, you know, when in Rome. But yeah, this early in the morning. There's not a lot going on. It's an interesting neighborhood, as I said. Tallest building in Malaysia, right up there. Hotel Mandarin Pacific, right over there. Got a 7-Eleven on this corner. And right over there, you can just make out a, Hind a, te a temple tower. That's a Hindu temple, very famous one, the... Sri Maha Mariamman Temple. Same name as the one in uh, Penang that I just visited. But a lot, like Lucy in the Sky is here, very well-known eatery, some uh, very well-known guest houses. I don't know if they're operational anymore. And uh, right up here above 7-Eleven, a uh, bit of a complicated story, but my original, when, when my guest house used to be an artist collective, this was the place. It was called the Bird Nest Collective. But then the owner moved his operation from where I am now to here. And I just heard the other day that he sold this place as well. So it's not open anymore either. I imagine that's another uh, effect of the pandemic. <laughs> Funny story. A friend of mine who picked me up at the uh, airline bus when I arrived I was talking to him at length about this building because apparently I can't stop talking about it. And I couldn't remember what it was called. And later on, he sent me a link to, you know, information about the building. So I'm reading it and committing it to memory. And then later on, I was talking in a journal like this one, all about that building based on this information I'd read. And I said, oh, this was the name of the building and this is how tall it is and on and on and on. 
and it didn't seem right to me. It was like the information was like not familiar. And the, but I finished the video and I exported it and uploaded it to YouTube and it was all done. And then at the last minute I realized he'd sent me the wrong tower uh, listing. He was telling me about that one over there, which I believe is the um, uh, TRX building, the Tun Razak Exchange. So he thought this building was the TRX building and he sent me all this information about that one. I didn't even, I didn't realize it at first and I was babbling on and on and on, describing, thinking I was describing this tower, but all the information I was giving was actually that tower over there. So I had to go back and actually uh, re-edit that, because I, I mean, I don't mind sounding like a dummy sometimes. I mean, you know, I am a dummy living overseas. I get things wrong. I don't know what's going on much of the time. And, uh, uh, should I go this way? Yeah, I think I can go this way. No, let's uh, stick on the main street. I think I have to turn over here. Um, but anyway, th this was a lot of information that was clearly 100% wrong. And I thought, ah, let's delete that. So I re-edited that file, removed the part where I was talking about the tower, or where I thought I was talking about the tower, and then uploaded it again. So, yeah, a very common pandemic site. I notice this everywhere I go. All of those signs, right? For sale, for rent, for sale, for rent, for rent, for sale. Everything that had to shut down during the uh, pandemic closures. But I guess the world is uh, getting back on its feet. We'll probably never know the true damage that the closures did because it was all these small businesses that suffered and who knows if there's ever going to be a complete record of, of what happened to the world during this uh, period of time. Yeah, pretty crazy. But anyway, back to my personal story. The uh, manager there opened the door to this. What he did was he took one guest room in the, in the hotel or in the guest house, like one room that no one was staying in, and he turned it into a storage locker that you had to pay to keep things in. So when he took over the place, the previous owner wasn't charging me because we had kind of a deal that every time I was in Kuala Lumpur, I would stay at her place. She had a guaranteed customer. And in exchange, I could, they had a big loft. I could just toss my bike and my bags up there. And she wasn't offering security or anything like that. It was just a space. You know, if you want to take the risk, you just want to leave your stuff here, fine, no problem. But the new manager, wasn't comfortable with that arrangement and he designated a, a storage room that he could lock and then he was charging me for it and uh, but now that I'm here staying at the place I just wanted to get my stuff out and no longer pay for storage because I'm paying for a room I'll put the stuff in my room since I'm paying for one and then we opened the door <laughs> and at first I mean I got a glance at it when I first arrived and it was a bit of a shock because it wasn't as professionally organized as a storage room, you know, as one might have hoped. It was a mess, covered in dirt, covered in dust. Uh, no organization, everything had just been thrown in in a big jumble. My bike had fallen over on top of everything, putting pressure on the wheels, like kind of a twisting force, which is not a big deal, but if it's sitting there for three years, kind of resting sideways on its wheels, it eventually, warps them and and there were as i mentioned in a few community tab posts uh rats there a lot of rats they're, they're, this whole neighborhood is full of rats it's just part of city life and uh, the rats had gotten into that room and everything was covered in rat droppings all my boxes my bags my bike it was just like a a, a carpet of uh, rat droppings and uh, oh, I'm a little bit lost now. I thought I knew where I was going. I'm gonna have to stop and uh, do a little quick little map check. Turns out I was right the first time. I was going down the right street. Never, uh, never second guess yourself. If you think you're heading in the right direction, you, you probably are. Yeah, Cafe Dion is right around the corner. Just got a message on WhatsApp from Daryl. He is, oh, M-W, <laughs> I don't know short forms, abbreviations. 
Oh, yeah, on my way. Oh, yeah, he is OMW on his way. And he'll be here uh, in, by 725, he said. He's a man after my own heart, very uh, precise. Yeah, lots of interesting places here. Uh, again, part of the, the history of uh, Chinatown, the history of Kuala Lumpur. You know, here, for example, Malaya Garden, very famous place here for breakfast. Ho Kao Hainam Kopitiam, you can see. You always know the famous place. The lineup, now, as soon as you see a big lineup of people, it's like, ah, famous. They don't have famous in their name, but they could have. This is new to me. Look at that. Some sort of a dinner theater, or is it maybe just got the theme of a theater? Pangung Kuala Lumpur, restaurant and bar. Huh, yeah, definitely have to come here. They even have a little uh, faux ticket window right there. And this alleyway is quite well known for the Instagram crowd. You, know, you can tell by all the lights and there's a very um, special alleyway right here on the right, just jammed with Instagrammable locations. I have a shot video here, of course, before. But uh, yeah, we can take a look uh, just on the inside. But yeah, it's quite a well-known spot. Like, it's real. I mean, this is an old, this is actually a real alleyway and it's just been restored and converted into kind of a, a tourism uh, attraction, you know? So it's kind of cool. But yeah, there's a whole bunch of restaurants and bars just in this tiny little section right here. Oh, look at that. Movie posters. Godfather. The King of Kung Fu. Titanic. Oh, it's interesting. They took the tight modern movies and put up posters as if they were old films. Seven Year Itch. Godzilla, Once Upon a Time in the West. That one I don't know. Girls in the Night. The Big Boss, I don't know but all the other ones I know. Well, The King of Kung Fu, I don't know that one either. Maybe that's just a fake movie. But I've seen all the others, you know, Seven Year Itch, of course, Godfather, How to Marry a Millionaire, all the classics. Back out onto the street, continue the tour of local places. Yeah, these ones aren't open yet, I don't think. Another one here, yeah, I came here. I think I shot a video here too, the old China Cafe. I definitely had a meal there. Maybe, I think I was treated to a meal there by a subscriber. I believe it's a Nonya restaurant. They serve classic Nonya food, if I have that right. And my breakfast place, which opens at 7.30, is right here. This uh, cottage like building that's the cafe dion as i said i've known about it forever I've seen it open thought about going in many many times i just never never got around to it yeah it's an old house converted into quite a nice restaurant and coffee shop yeah. 7:15. I have a few minutes to finish my story. I think I was at the, the point where I was describing a rat droppings. But yeah, everything was covered in rat droppings. And the, the manager of the place, I was curious to see what his reaction would be. Personally, if I were offering paid storage to my guests and, and I left it in that condition, I would be a little bit embarrassed. Um, I certainly would never have let it get to that state. And if I knew, and if I had, and I knew a guest was coming back, someone who had been storing things there for, you know, two and a half years, however long it's been. I would have gone in there to make sure everything looked okay. And if I'd seen all that rat droppings, I would have cleaned it all up and made it look better for when my, uh, you know, customer arrived. <laughs> but anyway, he opened the door and he was sort of like, oh, oh, and he said something. And he ran out and he got a broom and, and a dustpan and a bunch of rags and he just started sweeping all the rat droppings off all the boxes and the bags and they started i mean i don't want to give the wrong impression very nice guy very friendly guy 
And he started grabbing ba bags and boxes that belonged to me and carrying them outside, helping me. And um, yeah, I carried out my bike, flat tires, of course, very dirty. And one of my bags in particular, a big black duffel bag, I noticed on the front had a big hole in it. So I thought, oh boy, that's not good. Rats had chewed into the bag. And uh, I didn't realize it at the time, but they'd really gone to town on that bag. It wasn't just that one hole. It was like Swiss cheese. They tunneled in from every side. A, new, a different or the same rat tunneled through the bag into the interior from different directions. And then in order to find the food, because it turns out I had left a couple of packages of instant noodles inside the bag. I did it without thinking. I knew better. I've lived, uh, you know, long enough in my life to have made every mistake there is to make. And I've made the mistake in the past of putting food inside a bag and putting it somewhere. And you can't do that, especially in Canada. Like if you're camping at night, you don't leave food in your tent and uh, you really don't want to leave it in your car either because bears will smell it and they'll tear your tent to pieces, tear your car to pieces, you know, to get at that food. Mice, rats, cockroaches, ants, anything want to get at your food. So if you're gonna leave a bag anywhere, you know, for any length of time, you don't leave any food in it. And you may think instant dried noodles, you know, no rat is gonna smell that or be interested. Well, then you've not met rats. They'll smell it and they're very interested. And they tunneled through that bag from every possible direction to get to those noodles. Because one rat would start from the other side of the bag and the noodles would be in a pocket on the other side. Because in like a side pocket on the very end, or the end pocket, I guess. And uh, if they entered the bag from the other side, you know, they had to dig their own tunnel through the bag to get to it. And they just chewed right through everything that was in the bag. They even uh, stopped to eat a bar of soap. I had Dettol you know, sanitizing soap, pretty powerful smelling stuff. I guess they thought it was food and they ate the corner of it. You know, I can still see their teeth marks where they're gnawing away on the soap. Um, they didn't eat the whole bar. They just tried a corner, you know, a little nibble. And then they thought, nah, this isn't that tasty. So they moved on and they eventually found the noodles. And I don't know what they did in there, but, you know, not to gross anyone out, but there was liquid in there. I don't think I had any liquid in the bag, but there was liquid in there now, whatever it was. And yeah, a lot of stuff in there was destroyed by the rats. So nothing valuable, just stuff. You know, some, I had some clothing in there, some bags and a knapsack and, and items like that. And they were all just pretty much destroyed by the rats. And the bag was destroyed. Um, but I was lucky because I also had a very expensive bicycle trailer in there. And the trailer has a metal frame, but it, then it has a fabric bag, you know, wrapped around the frame. That's what makes it the trailer. And you attach wheels to it and pull it behind your bike. It's very expensive, made by a company in uh, the Netherlands. I had it shipped here. Haven't used it nearly enough to justify the expense. I need to go on some long bike trips in order to justify owning a piece of gear like that. But I thought if the rats chewed into my bag, uh, my duffel bag, oh man, what have they done to my trailer? But I guess I, by, by accident, I was gonna say I was smart enough, but I wasn't. I was just lucky enough that I did not store any kind of food in my uh, trailer bag and the rats hadn't chewed any holes into it. The material of the bag, everything felt a little bit like it had been in storage for three years, a little bit, you know, my poor trailer, all of my stuff just felt like it had aged dramatically um, yeah it just didn't feel like it was a new it was a relatively new trailer I only used it a little bit in Sumatra but now it definitely is like okay that's an old thing you've had that for a while you can feel it you know the material and eh, nothing in there was in very great shape though also kind of positive news the bike was mechanically appears to be in in surprisingly good condition I was amazed. I've left bikes in storage in the past and um, they fall apart very, very quickly. And uh, in particular, if, it, if there's any kind of moisture in the air, the chain will rust. The, 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 the cogs, you know, the rear cassette will rust. The cables will rust. 
the um, the derailers will rust, and when you get back to your bike after a, you know a length of time, it's just a solid chunk of metal that is fused together, and you have to tear the whole thing off and replace essentially the whole drivetrain. You know, new cassettes, uh, new chain, new derailers, new cables, new shifters. Basically, you got to replace the whole thing if you don't take proper care of it. And I've, I've done that in the past. And I thought that's what I would be facing now. But after I got the bike out, I grabbed the pedals and zoom, zoom, went around and around. The rear cassette went around, the, the derailleur wheels turned and it made that little clickety clackety sound, you know, the free wheel inside clicking away. And then I uh, kind of perched the bike up on its kickstand spun the wheel around and started changing gears and the, the gears the chain just moved smoothly up the rear cassette into first gear smoothly all the way down into eighth gear just up and down the front derailleur worked perfectly as well a little bit of stiffness there one of the brakes was a little bit stiff but after the amount of time it's been in storage uncared for. I mean, when I left, of course, I made sure everything was fully lubricated, but I thought I was only leaving for a month or two months at the most. Had I known I was going to be gone this long, of course, I would have packed it with grease and then I would have covered the bike with a, which I should have done anyway, even leaving for two months, but I should have covered it with a tarp and I should have been more careful, but eh, I did what I did and I kind of escaped relatively unscathed not as much damage as you'd expect. And then uh, I spent the rest of the afternoon and evening having a lot of fun because I got to dig around through all of my bags and boxes and just see what I'd left behind. Um, and a lot of it I had completely forgotten about because I'd been going through a bit of a weird period before the pandemic where I was cycling a little bit here and there but I'd reached a point where a lot of my gear needed to be replaced. So I was buying new things, like a new tent, new pannier bags, uh, a lot of new, uh, new tools and cook stoves, various items. But I still had my old ones because I, you know, I was leaving things in storage and I, I wasn't sure the new ones would work out. So I didn't want to get rid of the old ones until I'd broken in the new ones. So I, was, I kept planning to you know, go on a little bit of a bike ride, maybe around Malaysia, back to Sumatra, using all this new gear. And then once I figured out, do I like the new gear or is the old gear actually better? And I would you know, basically figure all this out and consolidate it. So basically I had boxes of old, old stuff that I didn't need anymore, duplicate stuff, and my new stuff, which I had actually never even used yet. That was a lot. Plus I kept switching gears, like I would be cycling, and I'd have all the gear and equipment appropriate to that. And then I went to Bangladesh with just a backpack, or next I think I went there with just a duffel bag, right? And then I went to Myanmar with just a backpack, and for that kind of traveling, I needed other little bits of gear and I was switching things up, taking all my cycling gear and putting it in boxes and getting more backpack suitable gear. And then of course the big change came where I started to shoot YouTube videos. That happened in the middle of all this. And of course, you know, taking on a new hobby of any kind means you're going to be buying new gear, new equipment, and there's nothing like shooting video to lead you down the path of becoming a, a man who does nothing but acquire new gear, testing new gear. So I had a tons of stuff in there that I had used, tested, didn't like, replaced with something else. And so I got to go through all my bags, pulling out all these things. I had old clothing. I didn't even know I've got a pair of pants. Nice pair, brand new gray, um, like travel pants, the ones with all the pockets and the zippers and you can zip off the lower part to turn them into shorts made by, I forget the brand now, but a very expensive brand, I guess. I bought when I was here in Kuala Lumpur. I don't remember. I got my old t-shirts back again. So I was going to wear one of the new shirts, you know, and talk about it. But of course, it's been in there with the rats for three years. I think I have to give everything a good washing before I use it. Actually, the clothing was in a bag, not invaded by rats, so don't worry. Still, you know, a normal person would wash that clothes, clothing, you know, before they put it on their body. So I'm gonna do that. 
And um, yeah, the other big, big concern I had related to my camera lenses, because I used to take pictures. I was not a video guy. All I did was wa wander around with a camera in my hand, take pictures all day, and then I'd write my journal in the morning. That was my life. Now I go cycling, take pictures, write about the experience in my journal, rinse and repeat. That was my life as a cyclist. And I had a certain set of lenses to do that for an Olympus camera. And then, keep, I keep seeing these cars go by, waiting for Daryl, and there he is. And Daryl, being a YouTuber, I don't think he'll mind being on camera a little bit. I'm recording one of my journal behind the scenes videos. You know, I see. just a, just cool. a cash talking about everything no, I did I yesterday. Like, oh yeah, that's the new one. That's the GoPro cool. three-way uh, version 2.0. Nice. Yeah. So you're not holding your clamp. I have it with me. Oh, I see. But the the key thing about this is that this three-way has the GoPro quick release on it. I see. It nice. doesn't have the GoPro fingers. It has the quick release, and that's great for me because now I can just unclip it, clip it on the clamp. Because I prefer this for walking around, yeah. and it has the tripod in the base. So it's better than the clamp for walking around, but I still want the clamp. Yeah. But this, this allows me to yeah. quickly the change. change. Yeah. But anyway, cool. you mind being on camera just for a oh, second? No. This is Daryl hey. from, <laughs> from Wander Eats. <laughs> I haven't uh, seen this blow in. Three, nearly two and a half, three years? I've, I, I don't dare count the months, yeah. but it's been oh three years. Yeah, um, so. yeah, 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 yeah. The last time I think we were at that, you know, that uh, building you took me to. The, oh, the, the way up the oh, yeah. I tried to go there yesterday, oh, okay. but the elevator wouldn't go to that floor anymore. Oh, okay, so great. maybe the restaurant closed. Yeah. But, yeah. Probably. Yeah, oh, Daryl was one of my first uh, contacts in Kuala Lumpur. He reached out to me. <laughs> and you interviewed me at a coffee yep, shop because yep, yep, yep. you were you were looking for people to interview for your channel yeah, at that to time. Try something new at the time. Yep, yep. Yeah. So yeah, Wander Eats. I've always admired the organization of his channel. Oh, I, I'm, really? I'm a, well, I'm a big one for organizing, and you have that system where you're, you're posting videos to the same channel, but it's you know eat. Yeah. Well, yeah, the, yeah. You have the, the different categories. Yeah. Segmentation. Yeah. yeah. Walk. Yep. You have walk videos, stay. eat videos, stay videos for staying in a hotel. I, uh, I always like that. I like to impose organization. Cool. Cool. But I was just finishing up my little uh, yep. journal story. Okay, let, me, let me check whether they're open. Okay. Uh, I'd gotten to the point of the uh, camera lenses, and I was worried about them in particular. A, because they're very valuable. B, they're very delicate, camera lenses are. And for whatever reason, mold and fungus love glass. They'll grow on glass. I don't know what they think they're doing, but if you leave a lens untouched, like you're not using it and air isn't flowing in and out of the interior and, and it just sits in a humid place for a while and you don't use it, um, quite often mold will grow on the out of the outer side, like the lens will have mold growing on it, which is not a problem. You can clean that off, but sometimes mold will get on the inside, a spore like one little spore gets on in the inside the lens, lands on one of the glass elements in there, starts to grow, and it can destroy the whole lens. So that was my main concern. And when I was digging through all my boxes and bags, I finally got to the, the camera lens level, had them all neatly packed with desiccant, you know, that desiccant that keeps everything dry. You know, I'm, I'm not a complete dummy. I got some brand new desiccant and put it in there with the lenses and had it all sealed in a nice little airtight, not airtight, but a you know, relatively airtight container box. And um, yeah, I looked at them very carefully and on one or two, I saw some fungus on the outside, clean that off. But as far as I can tell, perfectly good lenses. You know, they, they didn't suffer. The focus rings moved smoothly. Yeah. So all in all, things could have been worse. Let me put it that way. And, but it was a fun day. I kept finding so many new things in there. It's like, oh, I, I knew I owned this, but I didn't know I still had it. Like an iPod Nano, you know, a music player, which was like a huge part of my life for a long time. And there it was, my Nano, still loaded up with tons of my, some of my favorite music. I just had to charge it up and uh, it works. Yeah, it works perfectly. I have it in my bag right now, my little Nano. And yeah, 
yeah, I could go on. There's so many things that were in the bags, in the boxes, so many things I could talk about. But I'm going to leave it there. And uh, I guess I'll round out this video with a little, you know, look on the interior, our breakfast. Then I might go with Daryl to his new company's offices. He sent me a message about that. And I might add that uh, to the end of this video, this little journal. So now it's straying into a real Planet Doug video as I show you new things in the city. But yeah, as I said, this is kind of an experiment. All right, let's go catch up with Daryl. He might already be inside uh, ordering coffee without me. Can't have that. To go into a restaurant here, for the most part, you still have to be masked up. They prefer it if you are. It makes other customers feel comfortable, makes the staff comfortable. And uh, of course, once you're sitting down and eating, you can take it off again, but you know, you do, you do the thing that society wants you to do from time to time. So here we are on the outside. Here's the name. Hainan Cafe Dian. And I, again, I don't know the history of the place. No pork, no lard. Oh, here we go. This is, I don't read, I don't need a lot of history, but here we are. This building is in British style design. It would have been the old post office. A double story building with Malay and Tudor style architecture built in 1911. And in the old days, when transportation is not convenient, each time when the steamship arrived at Klang Port, the authority will transmit telegrams to Kuala Lumpur. Okay, I wasn't quite sure why they're talking about that, but it was the post office. So this is where messages would come in when they sent them by telegram. This was like a communication center. Yeah, so it's got, a, uh, got some real history, the building itself. And now we have to find out uh, uh, so what's, uh, oh yeah, <laughs> looks like it classifies as a famous place. You just look for the lineup, you know, and if there's a lineup, yeah, they've done a nice, uh, nice job with the entrance, you know, a little decoration up there, made it look quite fancy. Ravenous wolves. We all go rushing in as soon as they open. Yeah. Good morning. So yeah, the interior. Look at that. Very nice. Very gar guarded. Have you eaten? Have you come here before? Yeah, I think three times. Okay. Why did you pick the seat? So well, you, you know me, I, pay, I always pick the worst seat. Oh my God. It's what I, I just do it, I have a habit of doing that. Let, let's have it here. Perfect seat. I, I probably would have sat somewhere else, so there's Daryl's choice. Perfect seat. Yeah. It is nice. You have a seat over there, and you can set up your camera here if you like. Yep. Look at that. Yeah, very nice. Oh, technology. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm training Daryl in the Planet Doug ways, where, where you get coffee first, before you order food, which I like to do. And he's training me in the modern world, where to order from your table, they have a QR code on the table. So he's scanning the QR code and now it pops up a menu for this place and he can place an order and i guess it will magically be whisked here by genies or something so you you have the full access to the menu there yeah full access and, as well. and you can just place orders correct, correct. and so, you don't ever have to speak to a human being exactly so that's all i did um, this became very popular because of the pandemic uh, uh, we needed to be uh, you know uh, what's the word Socially distant. Yeah, exactly. You know. So yeah. this was the reason for this, and that's why all this became very popular. And, See, uh, that was also another reason because of the manpower issue. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I let Daryl choose the table, and he chose well. Mm. This is like the best table. Perfect you view. Scenery behind you. Yeah, scenery behind me, and from here I can see everything going on. Yeah. Comfortable. If had I. 
he wanted me to choose the seed, but apparently he doesn't know me as well as he thinks he does. Because I've talked a lot about how I always choose the worst table. It's my superpower. But yeah, he ordered um, coffees using the QR code and they brought it to the table, didn't they? That's right. Yeah, so it just showed up. We ordered two white coffees, right? So it's hot, but look at that. I went to a coffee shop yesterday with uh, expat Pete, another YouTuber here. And we went to a new coffee shop right beside where I'm staying. And it's a really nice place. But we both had the same reaction, which, which I always do, that the coffee cup, because we ordered a latte, was a little bit small. And we both drank it, and then we're done with our coffee. I was like, well, where did it go? So I like a big cup of coffee like this. So I'm very pleased with this. How much, uh, oh, I know, I got the menu here. 580. 5.80, which, to be honest, for a cup of coffee in Malaysia these days, that's a good price. Yeah, it's pretty all right. That kind of surprised me when I was in Penang. I'd go out and have dinner for seven ringgit, and then I thought, oh, I'll have a cup of coffee, and it was like 14 ringgit for the coffee. <laughs> I thought, okay, my coffee is costing Bomb, twice as much yeah. as my meal, so that, that doesn't make a lot of sense. Yeah. But six or seven ringgit is a better price. Yeah. I'm sure the place that you had, uh, was that place called Vijaya? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that one is much cheaper. Yeah. Depends what you order. I usually stick to the vegetarian buffet in the middle. Mm -hmm. Oh, they're all vegetarian dishes. You fill up your plate with that, then it's b beneath 10 ringgit. Yeah. Once you start adding the meat dishes, it could be 20 ringgit for your meal. It, yeah, yeah. You have a drink, and it adds up to twenty. But in the old days, my meal there was six or seven ringgit. Oh wow! Wow. But prices seem to have gone up dramatically in Malaysia yeah. since inflation, I left. Inflation, inflation. Everything's up. Very sad. That's definitely a, a type of coffee, though, because like the, the the latte I was talking about that was so expensive, it's a real cup of coffee. This feels like coffee drink. It doesn't actually taste like coffee. All I taste is the sugar. Yeah. Feels almost uh, tastes almost like chocolate, like a chocolate drink. Yes, yes. It's like hint of it, right? So because it's roasted as well. Yeah, I guess it's coffee, but yeah, it's a roasted. Hmm. Anyway, but at least it's big and hot. Yeah. And it gives me a chance to chat with Daryl, which I'm going to do for a minute. I'm going to yeah. turn off this uh, camera. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, shut this down. Yeah, there's actually, yeah, interesting. Uh, uh, there's the menu. Has a, I was reading about the history of it, that it used to be the post office, which I didn't know, built in 1911. And then, oh, they've got the bread. Oh, yeah. A lot of breakfast foods. So we'll order uh, food in a few minutes. I'm interrupting this coffee and breakfast session because I have to talk about this a little bit before, <laughs> before I move on. We're still just having coffee. We're placing the order for breakfast now. But they have this whole system here that I've actually never used before. Um, I'm so out of touch, I guess, with technology. This is all brand new to me. Um, but the table does have a QR code on it for table 21. And you take your phone turn on your QR code scanner, scan that, and it brings you to their website. And it has all their dishes on the website. And then you can see photographs of them. And Daryl was telling me this place is a bit special because when you click on one of these items, you get a little picture, but then you can get a big picture of the whole dish. So you can see everything quite clearly what you're ordering. And then you place the order here just by clicking on it. And then it, it just comes to your table. You know, a waitress brings it here. So you never actually speak to a human being. And they also, you, you have a menu as well. So you can look through the menu and every dish has a number on it. And there's a search feature on the website. So you can just use the menu to decide what you want, find it on the QR code system on the website and place your order that way and then they bring a paper bill to your table and then all your orders are added up over time and when you're done you bring the paper and pay on your way out. So I guess that's all kind of 
obvious. But what I found interesting is that not only, it's not that you, you are able to order through the QR code website system, you must, like you don't have a choice. <laughs> I'm so dumb. I wanted to get some coffee because this coffee is pretty harsh on my throat, you know? And I wanted to get some water. And I instinctively, I just got up and I went to find our waitress and says, oh, excuse me, could we have some ice water? You know, can, you, can we have some ice water at the table? And she looked at me like I was out of my mind. Like, why is he talking to me? Um, I don't understand what's happening. And I come back to the table and, uh, and then Daryl points out, well, no, even the water, you have to order it through the, uh, the online system. So the waitress did, when I spoke to her, she did bring me a cup of ice, but she didn't bring any water. <laughs> you know, I said, no, you have to order the water through the website, you know? So you, I guess what I'm getting at is this whole system is really fun and it's interesting. You feel like you're ordering your meal through a video game. Yeah, I feel like I'm playing a breakfast video game or something. And since I'm with the head of, of Mason Games, that's very appropriate. You can get on that, get that breakfast video game going. Um, but that's fun, but it also means you can't do it the other way. Like at no point can I just go up to anyone here and ask a question or a place. It's all done through the machine. So I, find that, uh, I find that interesting. Impersonal. It's impersonal. <laughs> But, yeah, it's necessary in a way. Interesting, though. Yeah, very. So I ordered, uh, we both ordered one of these. I, I got very addicted to this when I was in Penang, the um, soft-boiled eggs with toast, and you dip the toast in the eggs. But I didn't see that dish on their menu. They have the, they call them, oh, no, it's not what I was expecting at all. I guess, oh, you have to break it open yourself. All right, exactly. <laughs> So the eggs to the fun. <laughs> oh my God. I have to work so hard here to order my breakfast. I had to go to computer class to figure all this system out. And, and now I thought the eggs would come in a bowl ready to go, but they came in this plastic tower with hot water, which is good, I guess. It's keeping it warm for you. There, they, they're the, uh, I don't want to spill the water, but there are my two eggs and I have to crack them open and put them in the bowl myself. And I, I didn't see any of that toast though, like the toast that's all chopped up into squares with a pick on it, you know, you can do it one by one. I ordered some other kind of toast, um, or Daryl did. I just keep shouting things at him, you know, I want this, I want this, and he's, he's inputting all the orders. It's good to have Daryl in your life, you know? So, yeah, I guess that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna dump these eggs into my bowl and see, what, see what's going on with that, and then wait for my toast to arrive. One thing is, uh, I'm always perplexed when I come here, is that I do not know whether this is ready. Oh, okay. You, I mean, is it ready? Can we crack it now? Or? I think it ha it's not boiling anymore. Yeah, so it should be ready, it, right? It's as, yeah. it's as boiled as it's ever going to get. I think so as well. Then my other question, if it's already all done, why put it in this contraption? Right. Oh, there you go. So that, okay. The chicken floss. Okay. okay. Chicken floss. Okay, there it is. I did, I did notice on the website and in the menu, they do have a little disclaimer that says photographs are for illustration purposes only. Because <laughs> I do admit that when this showed up, I looked at it, oh, that can't be it, because it looks like kind of a flat croissant. But in the, on the menu, it's bursting. Like, it's like inches thick, and you can see all the chicken. It's just like a big... F so it's not quite as enticing as the uh, photo. So that's mine as well? Yes, yes should be a margarine. Okay, so this is my margarine toast, and I kind of wanted it all cut up into squares to eat with the eggs, but I guess I can dip it in a little bit at a time yeah that'll work look at that it's all um yeah that'll work that'll work all right i'm exhausted i haven't eaten yet of course it's my own fault 
who, who talks this much over breakfast except a YouTuber, right? So, ah, it's so hot. It's hot. Yeah, that's yeah. Why, uh, okay. This has disaster written all over it. <laughs> I, ah, I can't hold on to it. It's too hot. Yeah. You so, tried to hold it on the. On the yeah, yeah. Maybe I'll do it that way. Yeah, but I have to crack it open on something, and it's soft boiled, so this thing's gonna go spraying in all directions. Yeah, there we go. It looks exactly like the eggs from the May Kassa hot spring in Maysot. Like I would always go there to boil the eggs, and no matter how long I left them in the hot spring, they would never actually cook. They would never become hard boiled. They would end up like this. And then when I talked to people about that, they said, well, that's how we like our eggs. Like in Thailand and Malaysia, liquidy for them is soft boiled. For me, that's not soft boiled. This is just warmed up egg. It's liquid. It's really just, yeah, kind of liquidy. But if you combine it with toast, dip then then it works out all right i i didn't cause a mess or anything we got some shell in yours yeah i'm not as uh, eloquent as you apparently <laughs> yeah i got it done and i suppose some yeah I don't usually do this, but lately I've been doing it because everyone tells me I have to do it. Mm. So you got to add some soy sauce, right? Yeah, yeah, that's our... We grew up on this, so... Yeah. And then with some pepper and that's it. And mix it up. Some pepper. Mix it up. Yeah, this GoPro Media Mod, as I keep talking about, covers up the tally light on the front, so I can't see whether it's recording or not. Yeah, there's a tally light at the back. Yeah. So yeah it's but the screen is off. Yeah, screen is off. But it does have a flashing tally light on the front, but as soon as you use the Media Mod, you can't see it anymore. Oh. Covers it up. The front. Yeah. It's very, very poor design. It's not cheap, that's the thing, right? No, it's not Does cheap Lanzi at all. Does Lanzi have a similar version? No? No, nothing, uh, nothing like that. No. It's copyrighted by... Ulanzi just makes cases, but with no electronics, like nothing, yeah. there's no... All right. Enjoy. Yeah, so this is a... Yeah, it amounts to the same thing. Just dip it into the eggs. And... Wow. Also very sweet though. Sweet and butter, you know? Yeah, because it's already on the... Yeah, on the very sugary. Sugar. Okay. And I guess you can eat it like soup as well, you know, just sort of... <laughs> It's a bit like Rocky, you know the movie Rocky? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He yeah. drinks, very famous scene, like 10 raw eggs all at once. Yeah. So it's a bit, I mean this really is just raw egg, just warmed up a little bit. Okay. Now I'm going to sample my chicken floss. Croissant. So you have a croissant, like toast, toasted croissant, with the chicken inside. It's also sweet. It's full of sugar. Oh, <laughs> oh my goodness. Hmm. Very surprising. I wasn't expecting that. Well, I've got my sugar intake for the day already taken care of. 
Actually, I like this place a lot. Really interesting place. Once you figure out the ordering system, that's a lot of fun. I think it's very efficient. Though, typical Planet Doug review eventually boils down to would I come back and would I order this again? I guess I have a two-part review. I would come back. You, it's not for me. You prefer this? No, I just... I can switch with you because it's just your toast. There's nothing in it. Oh, no, it's all right. Sure. I'll, I'll, I'll suffer through what I ordered. <laughs> but I would definitely come back here. Very nice place. I like it a lot. But in terms of ordering, I wouldn't order this again. It's too much like a coffee drink. It's not really coffee. Kind of harsh and, and sugary. I don't like that that much. This whole egg and toast experience, it's not what I was having in Penang. It isn't the same sort of deal. Very, very liquidy. Yeah, I guess it's kind of fun. It comes in its own bowling, boiling thing to keep it warm and you crack it open. I kind of preferred it would just come ready to go. The toast, I wouldn't order that again because it's sugary. Daryl was just offering me his toast, which is just toast. No, no buttery sugar. So I would get that instead. And this, I, I wouldn't order that again. But they have a lot of good things for breakfast on the menu. So it's not their fault that I ordered all the wrong things. Next time try the rest of the month. Yeah, it just doesn't seem like a breakfast dish somehow, you know. That's true. There you have it. Doug's review. Doug's review of a cafe, cafe Dion. Yes, cafe Dion. Cafe Dion. So, I'm gonna dive in. I said I wouldn't order it again. That doesn't mean I'm not gonna eat it. <laughs> I'm gonna eat all this. Don't worry about that. Bye bye. So, that's our table behind me. We're uh, packed up and ready to go. Daryl's at uh, at the front. Yeah, great place. For a first visit, you're on a learning curve. If you've never done this before, the first time you would come here, you're gonna be thinking things through, scanning the QR code, you know, submitting your order, you know, sort of uh, figuring out how all this is done. And then the second time you come here, it'll be smooth and easy. And in terms of the food, as I said during my little mini review, I did not enjoy what I ordered, but I, that was my mistake, I think. I just, I didn't know that everything was so sugary. Everything was sweetened. Sweetened toast, sweetened croissant, everything was like so full of sugar. So I wouldn't order those dishes again, but of course they have the full menu and you can get whatever you want. But um, yeah, it's a popular place. I mean, it's well known. I think you'd include it amongst the famous places. The, the one I saw earlier, or, you know, around the corner, the Copy TM with the, with the lineup, you know, even Daryl was talking about how that's so famous and there's a big lineup there all the time. But I think this, uh, this classifies as a famous place. Anyway, um, all of this, to be honest, is more seen than behind the scenes, but I'm going to continue this as a behind the scenes video. It's just sort of a, a simple journal style. I'm not uh, traveling anywhere. But I am going with Daryl to his uh, offices, Mason Games. That's pretty exciting. I, yeah, I just love to go, and he's got his car here. So I always feel like I'm uh, living a life of luxury when I get to hop in a car. So yeah, this is the, uh, in case you've forgotten, my uh, guest house is just around the corner right there. There's that post office building, Passar Seni MRT right there. So. This restaurant is uh, right beside my current hostel. Yeah, the restaurant is right here. Very interesting part of uh, Kuala Lumpur, you know, Chinatown, essentially, and that's all. The big Chinatown market is just over that way. All right, now hop in, uh, hop in the fancy car and uh, go check out Daryl's uh, offices. <laughs> Doug is, <laughs> Doug is having a fun today behind the scenes. All these little things going with Daryl to his uh, offices, getting into the parking area. To me, he's like someone from Star Trek or something. He's got a little, little device that he just holds up from inside the car. A camera scans it from 
a distance opens the gate, we zoom in. <laughs> I'm so out of touch, all of that is striking me as futuristic technology. This is very, uh, very exciting stuff. Wow, check that out. Uh, Daryl actually has a, kind of a YouTube channel that features videos about Mason games, so it's part of his corporate vision and strategy, so I don't think he minds me showing the logo and stuff like that. Yeah, there's a website, Mason Games. And yeah, like a modern uh, tech office, right? Kind of makes me, uh, you know, I think about a company like Google or, or Pixar or something, you know, it's more of a casual environment as opposed to a modern, you know, office space. So you've got your, you know, bean bags here, a little bit of a, uh, a lounge area. Employees can sit there and talk about what they're working on. And of course, uh, coffee and drinks and snacks. I gotta say, I've had a lot of jobs in my life and I've never worked in an environment like this. Really? No, not even close. I mean, everything, every job I've ever had has been like straight up traditional cubicle, sit in your cubicle like a good worker. There'd be nothing, you know, nothing like this. So yeah, I've never had a job at a company, you know, that was sort of, yeah, as, as more of the philosophy of not paying the worker for their time necessarily, but paying them to get the job done. Yeah. And then the little details beyond that, assuming you get that system worked out, that the employee knows what their projects are and what they need to get done and how much time should be spent on that project. Beyond that, then uh, you don't have to be that rigorous. Like a, like a traditional company, of course, you have to clock in clock out, and if you're like 10 seconds late, your pay is docked by X amount. I mean, it's a very almost antagonistic relationship because they're monitoring your time all the time. But in a, in a company like this, a more modern one, it's more about are you getting your work done? And it's up to you to put in as much time as is needed to get it done. And then beyond that, things can be a little bit more casual. So I like that. I guess it, it requires that new way of thinking and I guess if you're the boss and you're in charge, you have to know what you expect of that employee, like what the project is, like they have to get it done. So you, you have to really know what you're doing, you know, as the boss. You can't just pay them for their time anymore, you're paying them for the work they do. So it's a whole, yeah, it's a whole different thing. I like it. And if I, if I were a, a Mason Games employee, you know, I'd be walking back and forth from the, uh, the coffee area all day long. It's like, <laughs> Doug, another cup of coffee? Yeah, that's what powers me. But, I think uh, you appreciate this. Yeah, I think so. The hot water. Oh yeah, the hot water, but also that kind of work environment that I was babbling about, because I'm very task-oriented. I like having a project to work on and I'll stay up all night long working until I get it done. Like, I, I don't worry about the time involved, you know? So I'd be a good employee in that kind of environment. I'd probably work twice as much as I was being paid to work, you know? It would just yeah, end up happening. I'm hoping that's safe as well. Okay. Yeah, and Daryl was joking that I would really love this. Yeah, hot water dispenser. Though it, it's, it would have to be extremely hot, Daryl can't be just lukewarm water. Otherwise, I would use a kettle. I would pl plug in a kettle and reheat it or something. But it's on the cup. Oh, that's what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah look at that. When Man. it's hot, it will... <laughs> what do you mean it's hot? When the cup is hot. Oh, then the, yeah. it changes color. Yes. Oh, I didn't even notice. I didn't know what you were... Look at that. That's amazing. And he was laughing when I was talking about how all this is high tech. <laughs> and futuristic, and yet it is. <laughs> I've never seen anything like that before. Can I get a Planet Doug version of one of those cups? Yeah, of course. I can share with you the vendor. Ah. It's kind of cool, right? Need a Planet Doug merch store. <laughs> I wasn't expecting to do quite this much filming on this little uh, morning trip, but this is also interesting. This is the Mason Games meeting room, and Daryl was just saying that sometimes he'll watch a Planet Doug video on this screen here. <laughs> and as he was joking, 
you know, I shoot everything in 1080p now. I, I experimented with 4K, but it's just way too much work. And I don't have the processing power in any of my equipment to handle it, really. So everything is 1080p. And he says it's usually fine on a phone. But once you get 1080p on a screen that size, yeah, it starts to break down a little bit. And employees are here with an open seating plan. So when they have work to do, they can sit anywhere they like, just as long as they're, you know, working. So they can choose whatever computer or, or station. They probably all have their own laptops and bring it home at night. And he was saying that they could even sit uh, poolside. So in the building itself, I guess there's a pool somewhere and they can just grab their laptop and go sit by the pool and, and work there. Again, as long as the work is getting done, what does it matter where you're doing it, right? But of course, a traditional company, if you're not sitting at your assigned desk, they think you're not working. So, yeah. Yeah, very interesting little detour here for, uh, for me. More and more interesting things, uh, because where we are, the whole place is called Velocity, I guess. Sunway, uh, Sunway Velocity. And uh, Daryl was just explaining the layout that there's three office buildings here, and they're all connected around this sort of um, courtyard area with all kinds of coffee shops, restaurants, you know, lunch, and, you know, um, convenience stores, any kind of stores. And then they're all connected with the Velo Sunway Velocity Mall. So you basically got it all put together here. Office, you know, workspace there, all those giant towers, connected with this courtyard, connected with parking, and then connected with a uh, shopping mall. Very convenient for workers. And then as this sign says here, there's a direct link to three MRT stations as well. So when Daryl founded this company, you know, Mason Games, he did a lot of research into where to put the offices, and I guess, you know, all those things. And this is one of the reasons? Yeah, exactly. I was thinking that would be absolutely key, <laughs> you know, to be close to uh, MRT stations. Oh, and I guess there's, that's what the whole complex looks like from up above, as swimming pools. <laughs> it's this funny. One, this is the development opposite. Which oh, is, it is? Yeah, currently building. There, that's the one they're building. Okay, so this is the new, oh, this is Velocity 2. Yes. And this one is one. Okay, okay, so this is a Velocity, Sunway Velocity 2. It's not completed yet, but this one is very similar, you know. Huh. It's just so funny to think that the work environment has evolved to this stage where it's so utterly different from any job my father ever had, any of my uncles, me. I've never had a job where I could work even in a place that was this convenient for living. You were in Taiwan, was it? Like oh, no. Oh, are you oh, kidding me? Seriously? Oh. <laughs> oh, you make me laugh. You make me laugh. Taiwan? No, it was just a giant building in the middle of nowhere. I had to walk a long way from the MRT. I had a desk and a chair, and I tried. They even replaced all our chairs, and they're were, they were trying to replace my chair with a really uncomfortable one. And I tried to keep my old chair, and they wouldn't even let me do that. Because wow. uh, the chairs all had, I mean, it was a regimented, I wouldn't call it a prison-like environment, <laughs> but clocking in, clock, very antagonistic relationship with the management. And then, nothing like this. Like, if you had to go out and, you know, do some shopping, pay a bill, mm. take care of all the tasks of daily life, you're, you're nowhere near where you would, could do any of that. No, there was nothing like this at all. This is like a foreign land to me. I find it quite interesting. Yeah, very cool. These movies cost so much to make, they have to invest. I think the way I've heard it, if the movie costs a hundred million to make, marketing is also a hundred million. Oh, wow. the, the marketing is equal to the, to the budget for the whole movie. Otherwise, no one will go to see it. And they can only make their money really the first week it comes out. And if they don't create enough buzz for that first weekend, they, they lose, right? But does that, I don't know. I haven't been to a theater in a decade, probably. Is there one? I forgot to ask you. Is there one in Mason? No. Oh, yeah, there is. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, there is. Yep, two of them. Oh, nice. Two shopping malls, two theaters. Oh, inside the mall. Yeah. So every uh, mall 
I'd like to go looking for the central dome and I found it and they've got down here in the center this big display for the big new blockbuster Black Adam which of course I will not be rushing to the theater to see. I'll probably watch it eventually but I'll just catch it online somehow. I won't, uh, won't be going to a theater but I do like to watch the blockbusters just so I'm keeping up with pop culture. There's the dome. Sunway, yeah, okay, there's the sun up there. The sun theme. And then kind of a red sunshade. Very nice. And I guess there are MRT, LRT access points at both ends of the mall. Ah, Samsung. Nice. Yeah, so I guess we're going to grab some kind of a drink here, chat a little while, and then uh, Daryl has to get to work. Yeah, I'm going to. I'm getting a whirlwind tour. This is the uh, Nanyang Cafe. Oh. Huh, interesting. Kind of a Chinese-style diner. Yeah. Like a 50s diner but yes. Chinese style. Daryl says the coffee is really good. So I was thinking, do I want another coffee? Oh, yeah. But maybe, uh, maybe I will just because the coffee I had this morning was not up to... Expectations. No. <laughs> it didn't have that coffee feeling. Yeah. So maybe I will do that. But they do have, uh, yeah, all your standard hot and cold drinks. No, no point going over the menu. A lot of desserts and uh, lunch foods, you know, club sandwiches, french fries, burgers, and then all kinds of Chinese food. Big menu here at uh, the Nanyang. Non, non, Nanyang. Nanyang Cafe. Off. <sighs> mask off. Oh. It's one good thing about the mask. If there's one good thing about it, you get so much pleasure taking it off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, ah. Oh. oh my God, yeah. That's feels right. so good. I've started massaging my face lately, and it feels so good. I'm just sort of like, oh man, it feels so good. Yeah. <laughs> you can probably get face massages somewhere in the world, but I've never, I've never done one. Yeah. Anyway, it's gonna I have, have to. I have to focus and to order here. <laughs> there goes my host for the morning and the titan of industry, Darren, on his way to Mason Games. And, uh, yeah, he's got to go uh, get work done. Okay, I'm just back at uh, the, the dome, looking up at the sun. And uh, I suppose I could wander around the mall and do some exploring, but my plan now, of course, is to go back to my current home and start organizing all the stuff I've gotten out of storage and uh, get busy. i got things to do. Yeah, I'm going to take the uh, MRT or LRT back. And when I was at uh, Daryl's office and he was showing me the mall here... Uh, okay, now where do I go? Okay, I have lost track. <laughs> Daryl said something about not going down. But I have no choice but to go down. I mean, up here there's a... Uh, there's nowhere else to go but down. <laughs> Either by elevator or escalator. All right, we're going down. Just have to find a, the entrance to the uh, MRT system. But I was praising this whole concept of this. Yeah, there's the, the major dome right there. This living, the working environment that is combined with a shopping mall, transportation hubs, and even living quarters because there are residences in there as well. And I was talking about how interesting that idea was and how I've never had a job like that in my life. But at the same time, you can look at it as how you never get away from work. I mean, if you work, shop, and live all at the same place, then you don't have a division between your home life and your work life. And maybe that can be seen as something of a, uh, something of a negative, you know? I don't know. Something to, uh, something to think about. There's the whole complex. There's even more to it than I thought. There's also a hotel, Sunway Velocity Hotel. 
is a very interesting uh, real estate development when you think about it. It's everything all together. Residences, hotels, shopping mall, workspace. You could set up a life in there and then you never have to leave from that building, which can be seen as a good thing. And I suppose it could also be seen as a kind of a negative thing as well. Um, <laughs> I have no idea if I'm heading in the right direction. Oh yeah, there's the elevated LRT train. Okay. I just didn't realize there was a long walk from that bridge at ground level to get to the uh, entrance to the MRT system. I thought he just led directly there. Well, long walk, it looks like half a kilometer in total or something like that. Found the sign, Maluri Station, bus LRT, MRT. So, we're almost there. That's one thing, as I was digging through all my boxes, uncovering all of my gear, I found all my old maps, like my maps of the city. I've got them all in my knapsack here. This is my map of the uh, MRT system. And I have my, caught my pass card for the MRT system somewhere, sort of like a touch and go card. You just top it up, so you don't have to buy a token every time. But uh, right now, I couldn't remember where I put it, so I'm going to have to buy a token this time. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to look at the map and see which, uh, which line I want. We've got a map here. It took me a while to locate Maluri. I'm not that familiar with it, but that's it here, Maluri Station. And so I have a choice, I guess. I could take the number three line, the Ampang Central Timur line. And that would take me to Masjid Jamek, and then I can walk from there to Pasar Seni. But I can also take this line, Kajang Kwasa Damansara line, which would take me directly to Pasar Seni. So it seems like that's the way to go. And I think that's the MRT line, the underground line. So I'm going to try that first. One, two, three, four stops. And I think to get there, to go into this station to go underground. I think the other one is the above ground line. But I can't go wrong, really. It looks like both, uh, one will take me to Masjid Jamak and the other one will take me all the way to Pasar Seni. So, say goodbye to the outside world. We're going to become an underground dweller for a while. I realize that the maps I currently have are you know, three years old, and I think the MRT system has expanded quite a bit since in the meantime. So I just asked them for an updated map and they hand these out to uh, anyone that asks for them. You know, beautiful map of the entire system. Yeah, need your reading glasses though for that. If you, if you wear reading glasses, pretty tiny print, the system gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And then, man, the details get smaller and smaller and smaller. Mm -hmm. All right. So here are the machines. Similar to machines everywhere in the world. I'm just going to buy a token. I'm here in Malari. Colored red for convenience. And I want to go in this direction towards Kwasa Damansara to Pasar Seni. And that is, uh, yeah. I do find the naming system for the subway lines confusing here. Like, I know this line, I ride on it all the time, but to this day, I still don't know what it's called. Like, what is the name of this line? It's not the green line, the blue line, the apple line, the pineapple, but, you know, it doesn't have a simple, clear name. I think it might be the Kajang line, maybe, but I can never get that clear in my head. So, English. You can uh, reload your card buy tokens that's what I'm going to do and here like you have to choose your line and that's where things get confusing for me because there they are there the different ones and I guess that's mine number nine Laluan Kajang so I was right but I guess you can type in the name of your station here that makes it easy so 
I just start typing Passar Seni, and Passar, Passar Seni comes up. Uh, this must be the Kaja, Kajang line. So single journey token, Maluri, Passar Seni, 220. And here we are. The classic YouTube video of the token. I didn't film the actual inserting of the bills and notes because I needed hands to do that. <laughs> So, we'll just uh, go through the turnstile, touch our token right here, and it opens up, and then away we go. And I saw a sign here about what, I think I needed platform two to go my direction. I can ride around in them all day long, just for fun. Air conditioned. So, destination, Kajang. Uh, and over here, Damansara. So, this is the direction I want to go. Platform 2. And this is handy down on the platforms. They have a sign like this divided into two. The whole line is duplicated on each side, but it's pretty clear to tell what's going on. This is very intuitive. I like this system a lot. You can just glance and you know that all this is grayed out. <laughs> Loud announcement. So those are all grayed out, of course, meaning the train has already been here by the time it arrives and then it arrives in Maluri. And the ones that are in bold, in black, that's where it's going destination Kaja and then over here is exactly the opposite everything is grayed out at the bottom moving upwards and then it's heading towards Damansara so when I see that map that system I find that very intuitive and easy to understand yeah I like that a lot my train is arriving right now but here you can see the different lines this is the Ampang line Kalana Jaya line, Kliya Transit line, this is mine, Kajang line, Uttar Jaya line, etc. So those are the names of the, uh, the different lines. You just get to know them, I guess. But it does strike me as not the greatest name because it's named after one destination, like on one end of the train, but it goes to another destination too. Senior citizens and disabled persons. And this is very clear too. I like this a lot. Very clear map. Station Brickland. Cochrane. Next station. Cochrane. Station Brickland. Cochrane. Next station. Cochrane. Station Brickland. Cochrane. So you have all the red dots. Of course, those are all the stations we've been to. That's where I got on. And the next one is yellow. That's the next one we're going to with the arrow showing us we're traveling from here to here and all the green ones are the direction we're going in. So it's very intuitive. You just glance at it and you can tell instantly what's going on. And uh, I'm just heading to uh, pass our sending right here. You are now approaching Cochrane. Exit to the right door. It's a beautiful modern train too, as you can see, just looking down the length of it. Really nice. Nicely air-conditioned, clean and spacious. And at each end of the train, there's a window. So, from here, you don't see very much on this end, of course, because we're down inside a dark tunnel. But you can look out the front of the train and uh, look down the tunnel. Station Brikunya, Don Raza Exchange. TRX. Just kind of fun. Station. 
And if you happen to be outside, you know, on an elevated train line, you can actually see the world around you where you're going from these uh, front and rear windows. It's, it's kind of cool. Exit to the right door. Arriving at the next station. This is the uh, TRX station, Tun Razak Exchange. One of the big towers of Kuala Lumpur is located here. Doors opening. Fascinated by the small things in life, even a door opening automatically, just a, you know, fascinates me. It's funny. I was so busy thinking about the the signage and the design of the MRT system, I completely missed that we were stopping at my station. I was just standing there on the train, thinking about something, and I suddenly realized, oh, this is past our city, and I popped off, popped out. This is the, here you go, Kalana Jaya line. It's funny, I was walking towards it, I was looking everywhere, like looking for the name of the line. Like when you see Pasarseni everywhere, Pasarseni Station, Pasarseni Station. Yeah, I know that, what line is it? I finally found it, this tiny lettering right there. Kalana Jaya line, so that's what this is. Kalana Jaya line. I'm not taking that line, I'm getting out here, of course. Ah, and we're right back at the uh, tallest building in Malaysia. Look at that. Nice view. And this all looks the same, same machines. The same vending machine, I think, that was there before. My news convenience store outlet over there. Yeah, this place has been here for a long time. This may be new. Yeah, I hadn't seen this place before. And we're right back where we started from, down by, down by the river. And here, we're right back at the free Vokeyel line, you know, the free bus. This one is the purple line. Yeah, that, I think that always struck me as odd. I remember that now. I think all these are named after colors. This one, yeah, this is the purple line. But the bus itself is always green, right? So it's like, you kind of want to look for a purple bus, but it's the line that is purple. So if you look at a map of the system of the free bus, you see the purple line, but the bus itself isn't purple. I think they're all, I can't remember if they were all green before, but it looks like they're all green now. But they're great. Hop on them, hop off whenever you like. Once you learn where they go, they're very convenient, though they can get very crowded particularly at rush hour because everybody uses them you know local people to go home go to work go to school because they're free why wouldn't they take them so yeah I think they're kind of designed with visitors in mind to make life easier for tourists but of course local people can use them as well why not And I guess that is it. My uh, journal behind the scenes video kind of spilled over into a regular touring the city video. But it is kind of a behind the scenes because none, very little of this is new to me. I'm just basically, you know, these are my old stomping grounds. I'm just sort of relearning all the things I already knew from having been here before. So it is kind of a behind the scenes video. It qualifies. All right, that's it, shutting down. I didn't tell all my stories from yesterday when I was unpacking my boxes and bags and bicycles and 
digging into all of my gear. I have a ton of stories connected with all the stuff that I was pulling out of those bags and boxes, but those stories will have to wait until later on. Okay, shutting down. Gonna go back in and continue unboxing and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, see you in the next video.